Hello, mate. Hello. How hello, are you? Hello. Yeah, I'm not too bad, mate. I'm not too bad. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I think we should just start like this, you know, about a general introduction to each other. Some people that won't realise, we've just uh, filmed a little video with Peter, our editor, uh, that you'll be getting soon. And we thought, we should, you know, he's left the call now. We'll just jump straight into the podcast. Are you ready? Welcome to the Before the Free Count podcast. In the red corner, it's Charlie Quick. And in the blue corner, it's Callum Hunt. And so, let the show begin. So, Callum, how you been doing? Yeah, I've, I've been good, thanks, Charlie. I've been quite busy recently. Um, annoyingly, and this is an annoyance, I haven't been able to watch as much wrestling as I would li- I've liked of late. Uh, I've been to a Rev Pro show recently, and that was really good. Um, but I've been slightly keeping up with wrestling, you know, via social media um, and, and, pod- and other podcasts. Uh, but it seems as if things are flowing in the right way. I can't 100%. believe, I just can't believe that, like, um, you know, that the bloodline story is, is just still going so strong. I know. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say it's back onto, like, you know, Twin Peaks level where it was two years ago. I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again, like to me, the highlight, like the 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 highest of the highs for them, that storyline was um, nearly two years ago now with Sami Zayn hitting Roman with the chair and you had all the fallout from that. And then you had Cody losing and all of that. I think that was one of the, I think that was the, I'd say Clash of the Castle up to that mania was probably one of the best storylines I've seen. You know, when it got to that pivotal point. But no, 100%, I agree with you. Lots of changes, though. I mean, like, even for um, the stuff we haven't seen, like, just going through things very quickly. It's like, uh, Jey Uso losing the title on Monday. Didn't see that coming. Did not see that coming at all. And uh, Samantha Irwin leaving. Really shocking yeah. there. Really, really shocking. What did you think of when you heard um, both of them stories broke? Well, Samantha Irwin, um, great announcer. Really, really good. Um, I think she's gonna. She's AEW bound, I would say, because of Ricochet. Um, nah, he's he's already confirmed it that she isn't. But why? But what's she gonna do then? Why? Why is she departed? I mean, why? Well, this personally, is why they, why, I think why, her why voice. Mm, personally, the fact that when she she announced her retirement, that she was uh, commended for her work by Michael Buffer, who's probably the most famous commentator and ring announcer in the world, the fact that he was giving her props when she announced her retirement from WWE proves how big of a scale she's gone from when she started. And I think that's the thing. Everyone's thinking, oh, she'll go straight back into it. Not necessarily. I I wouldn't be surprised, actually, because of the merger and the things that have happened, if she became a ring announcer for something like the UFC. Now, I'm being serious. Like, because... The fact that she's got someone like that complimenting her work and the majority of the people that follow him won't even know who that person is. The fact that he's giving her props, the man that came up with Let's Get Ready to Rumble, you know, probably the most famous and now, uh, you know, we know what I'm trying to say, uh, announcer in any sporting event. And he's saying she's one of the best in the world. You know, I can see her going to so Wait, many other levels now. Sorry? Who, who said she's one of the best in the world? Michael Buffer. Oh, what, the guy that does UFC? Yeah. No, no, the guy that... You know who Michael Buffer is, sure. Oh, yeah, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, that guy, you know, the, um, the, the thousands in attendance and the millions watching at home. Get oh, let's get ready to rumble. Yeah, that guy. The guy that get pays a million quid just for saying that one line every time he does it. Yeah, that's kind of crazy. He he actually did an announcement for Chelsea once. Did you know? Yeah, I'm not surprised because he's done so much other work. But a lot of people don't realize this. So like the actual catchphrase, "Let's get ready to rumble," he copyrighted years ago. So if anyone ever wants to use it, they have Who's to. Who's the guy like... that does US? I don't 
didn't know. And that's the thing. You know what I mean? In terms of ring announcements, there's no, not a lot of names that you know. But, you know, you say, yeah, you say Mike Buffer, Michael Buffer, people know who you're talking about. Yeah, but Bruce Buffer. And I think that might be his brother. Which could be a very rich family, if so. Wouldn't surprise me, though. Jay Buffer. Siblings, Michael Buffer, yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah. Michael Buffer is his brother, but I'm going to say, I think Bruce Buffer is the better announcer. I yeah. think Bruce Buffer is is the best announcer on the planet. I, there's no other announcer that sh- sends goosebumps down my spine than it's fucking uh, Bruce Buffer. You know, he it's time! But there's certain voices that you like, you know, you compare for each sport. Like, to me, in terms of ring announcers, you've got people like Michael Buffer. In terms of um, commentary teams, you've got, you know, in wrestling, you've got, to me, it's always been uh, JR and the King. Um, football, if I have to say it, has always got to be, if I could find it, because I never remember their names, but I always know who I'm talking about. Andy Cole. <laughs> Not Andy Cole. I can't remember his name. Oh, wow. Lillian Garcia is back in WWE full time. That's just been announced. Charlie. Ten seconds later. Lillian Garcia. Could have actually met her not that long ago. Um... A few minutes later. Two hours later. But there you go, you can help me. Was it Alan Smith? Stuart Robson? Alan, Alan Smith. Googled it. Both, both those names sound very... Yeah, but I, I put it in as the famous one that did FIFA, but they were the ones that I knew before I even played football. FIFA. So I presumed it was Martin Taylor and Stuart Robson. Much, much, much later... Lee Dixon and Derek Ree. Three days later. One week later. Oh, he's good. Sorry about that. But no, going on from there, like, you know, I think she's going to do absolutely fine wherever she goes. Uh, in terms of Jey Uso, I did find that a bit of a shock, though. What did you think? What did you say about Jey, Jey Uso again? He's lost the title. That is a shock, isn't it? Yeah, I think. Th- yeah, that really surprised me. after everything. But I'm kind of glad Braun Breaker's got it back. I mean, I love Braun Breaker. But yeah, I mean, it's a bit of a crazy one, though, because they didn't give him long with it. Jesus that's Christ. what I thought. It was like just starting to build momentum. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, I thought that one thing we could talk about today is that uh, WrestleMania, the pre-sale tickets went on sale today. So I thought we could talk about what we could expect to see there. What are you expecting to see at the showcase of all the immortals? Wow. Um... Uh, you know what, Charlie? I think we're going to be treated to a fantastic show, if I'm honest. Yeah. I mean, the first one I think is worth starting with, and I think we've spoken about this before, is that the one person we know that's definitely going to be there is John Cena, because he's in his retirement year. I was talking about this earlier when I was actually just waiting for you to join with Peter, and I think that most people will agree. that I'm not going to say it's a guaranteed fight to happen at Mania. I think it's a guaranteed fight to happen within John Cena's last year. 
I'd love it to happen, mate. That would be obviously Randy versus Cena one last time. But again, I think if that happened, I would love there to be a title on the line, but I don't see that happening these days. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand. Mm. I think I think we might get Cody versus Randy. And and a bit of a big prediction I have is Cody's gonna lose the title before us, aren't you? See, I think that's possible as well. I really do. Um, because I think it would make more sense for him to win it back. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it might be... Do you know one thing I do see happening, though? Go on. So you know how everyone said for years now, and it's gone on and on and on and on and on, excuse me, that it should be Rock versus Roman headlining. And we thought we were going to get it last year. And then a lot of people said, well, it's definitely this year. And then there's been like the whole controversy thing of like the rock saying he's not going to be available. But then that was leaked. It was leaked that it was wrong. So it is, he is going to be available that week. Do you know what I see happening in that storyline? Go on. Just to give it that bit more edge, I think that the rock is going to put his title that he got last year on the line against the Ulafala. So I think I think Solo's going to lose to Roman for Mania and gain it back. And I think when he gains it back, it's going to be him versus Roman at Mania. So the title and the Ulafala both on the line. Because I think that would make sense. Yeah, I think that's, that's you know, uh, it was a point made on Busted Open Radio that the how do you say it? That Ubafala is that what is Ulafala. it? Ulafala is is nearly at the same elk as the championship. Yeah, you know? oh, 100%. In terms of that storyline and what it represents for that part, it, 100% it is. Who's wearing it at the moment? Solo. See, they were also. He got it back. He nearly got it back on Friday. There, there's he dropped it and he went to go and pick it up. And then I think it was. Um, oh, what's his name? The crazy, crazy guy. Um, Jacob Fatu. Um, yeah. Uh, basically, speared Roman. I, be- I believe that's right. Don't have a go at me, viewers, if that's wrong. But it was something around that, you know, they got involved and gave it back to Solo, whatever. But there was a minute, there was a minute where he could have won it. Like, you just picked it up and put it on. But yeah. But I, I certainly see that happening. I think we're going to be going down the same kind of road that we did two years ago. But I think instead of it going the way that they want it to, I think we're going to have someone, and I don't know who it will be yet, but I can see someone turning against Solo Sokoa, almost like uh, Sammy did against Roman two years ago. And I can see that happening. But again, it's really interesting the way they're going, because we had The Rock come back recently, and, you know, he did the one, two, three, four. And, you know, four people, big event coming up, Survivor Series. Are we going to get that? Are we going to get Bloodline versus Bloodline War Games? Is that why Jay's lost the title? You know, because that would make sense. Roman, Jimmy, Jay, and The Rock versus Solo, Jacob Fatu, uh what are the other two called? And this is where I always get them wrong. Callum. I'm trying to think. I can't remember. I actually can't remember myself. Well, you know who we're talking about, basically. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Tongaloa. This is the thing. Tungalo and Tungatong, Tangatonga. Why did they give them such stupid blinking names? You know what I mean? Jimmy and Jay rolls off the tongue. You know, so much more easier. Tamaloma Tanga Tonga. Fucking stupid names. I'm sorry, but they are. Um, But you know what I mean? This is the point. Like, if we can't even remember their names, it makes you think, like, well, is it as over as people are saying it is? Anyway. But no, there's something definitely going to kick off with that. In terms of the women, do you know one prediction I would make for Mania? Go on. 
I can see Becky Lynch being in the title race for one of them and Charlotte Flair being in the other. Because both of them have been out for a while now. They're both due a return. It will be around that time. Oh, it would be nice to see either of them come back, to be honest. Yeah. I think it's time. I think Charlotte's a definite. I think Becky's still a maybe because of what's going on with the contracts. But that's 100% one of the biggest things. Uh, do you know someone else who I really think we have a big chance to see in coming back? Especially with the way they're going with things at the moment. Go on. I think Big E's coming back. Mm. I really do. Because they've been hinting at things for a while. And you kind of had that thing on Monday where he was saying to... Um, Kofi was saying to Xavier, like, we should go back, we should help the Miz. And then, of course, the White Six got involved. But, like, I, I, re- I was really hoping that he was going to turn to him and go, what would he do? Because if he said that, you know it was going to happen. But where they didn't say, I kind of thought, are they holding back for something here? And I think that is what it is. I really do think that that is something that could be happening soon. And if it does, it's going to be it probably. Well, I say that, I want to say it would be at the Royal Rumble, but the thing is, that's still so far away. You know what I mean? It's not even in January, it's in February this year. Granted, it's the first day of February. But you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, but no, 100%. Well, I don't mind people Well, you know. But, um, no, what are your predictions for Mania next year? What are the thing apart from the two, the three things we've talked about so far? We've spoken about, you know, what we think we're going to, ha- what's going to happen with the bloodline. We've spoken about what okay. we think is going to happen so, with Cena. Main, main event. Main, main event. Main main event is going to be Roman versus The Rock. Yeah, well, I can. I, I think that's going to be the the blockbuster Sunday I mean, night main. If it isn't, if it isn't, it's going to be a triple threat, including Cody, because of I whatever he yeah. gave him last I know year. I think people just want to see Roman and Rock. I, that's the thing, and I think that's where they could go wrong here. I think they might. I think because this last year I didn't want that. This year I do. Yeah. Um, and that could be and, and let's be honest, the last couple of years if anything's proven that we listen to the fans they've enough proven that in the last couple of years yeah um, in terms of Cody, I mean why not Why not him going against Cena because that could be a real parcel of the torch mm-hmm. because I see Cody as like a Cena, that baby very face true. that like everyone yeah. loves you know, and it's just very, like very true you know, he's got that same sort of power behind his promos and, and everything. And I can see Cody becoming a lot like a Cena. A hundred percent. I don't know. Yeah, I can see that. Cody versus Cena. His last match. You know, you. I think it could be great. I mean, you could have almost another one of those moments where Cody sort of says to Cena in the match, I'm sorry, I love you, sort of thing. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm so sorry. And then, like, pins him, you know. Um, Do you think that uh, we're? I think that most people are like a lot of people think the guy's going to main event, which I'd say yes, but I just don't see it happening next year because we've already said like two or three opportunities for the the, the headliners for next year. Um, but I think one of the biggest fights of the weekend it's got to be something like CM Punk versus Seth Rollins. It's got it's got to be something like that. It's got to happen, surely. I, I also think I think CM Punk versus Seth. I think that's going to be the, yeah. one of the matches. That's, that's that what, what I just said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, like Seth. Um, I think you're gonna. I think oh, I don't know if they can carry this out for that long, but maybe something like Liv versus Rhea. But maybe that's too far off. No, I, I think that they, could pay off. I think that could, could they pay off. Thought it was burning for that long. Not yeah, sure. I think they could. I think they could. Uh, I mean, technically, they've only got one more pay per view to go, or well, two more pay per views to go this year. So I can see it happening. Yeah. Uh, every while. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Um, who who else would you would... put a... So you've got Dumpfer. That's another one to think about. Yeah, another one. Um, uh, 
Gunther versus. Actually, I think he will carry that championship for that long. Hundred um, percent. Gunther versus. Oh, that's a really tough one, actually. I would like to say KO, but the thing is, from what I've heard, it sounds like Kevin Owens is doing his final run soon. From what I've heard. And I don't think it's going to go to the next Mania, from what I'm hearing. Kevin Owens. I think, I think he's retiring at the end of the year, and his last story is going to be up against Cody. From what I've heard, I'm not saying that's definitely or, true. Or, or Gunther versus Cody. Um, oh, you know, that would be so good. Yeah, I, I have a feeling if Cody loses the belt before Mania, he w- might want to go against Gunther. Because I think Gunther's going to beat him at Crown Jewel. Um, that's my oh, prediction. I no, think... I don't see him beating him at Crown Jewel. No, I, I, I do. I do. I think Gunther's going to win. No, and that's, no way. That's going to show people. No, and then, then that will give Cody the fucking thing that he's not invincible. No, but if you give Cody all, if you give Cody both the titles, he can then go into the next Mania at the same position that Roman was three years ago, with two titles I, on the line. I think Gunther wins. Cody turns heel. No, Cody keeps the belt, obviously. Uh, someone beats Cody. Cody turns heel. Then Cody goes against Gunther at Mania. I think that's no. Nah, it the... won't be him at Mania. No way. I I've actually now you've said that I'm now actually more sure that Cody will win at uh, um, Crown Jewel because well, I'm, I, I'm willing well think about it. Wouldn't it be brilliant if two years good. on you could go two years ago we were seeing Roman hold both the titles going into this match and absolutely destroying Cody and then. A year and then two years later, with well, no, sorry, if you're going to do it properly, three years ago, Roman went into a match and went in and came out with two titles. This three years later, we've got the current champion going in with two titles and hoping to walk away with both of them. Yeah, come uh, on, that would that would add a lot to it. I know what you're saying, yeah. Um, and then what, what, what are your opinions on the women's match? Yeah, so going on from what you said then, the women's matches, um, one thing I did think of very briefly then was, where do you see Nia Jax by that point? Because I don't see her holding the title to Mania. No way. No, I think it's And that's the t- other thing. Do you think, t- well, that, with what's going on, do you think Tiffany could do, the, do a Seth Rollins, be the first woman to do it? Is that possible? Is that something we've not even considered here? It could happen. It could happen. Um, maybe Nia loses it to someone else. Yeah. And, uh, gets interrupted. But then, yeah, Tiffany, there's been a lot of um, things about Tiffany comparing to her to Charlotte Flair and stuff. Um, you know, would you want to see Tiffany versus Charlotte Flair? Oh, well, that would be so good. Yeah, yeah, I hadn't thought of it, but the second, the second them words left your mouth just made me think yeah 100% oh yeah that's a genius idea that's, I think we're also yeah, going to get that, that, oh, the more I'm thinking about this that that would be no you've sold me that 100% that would be perfect Tiffany versus Charlotte Flair that would be probably as good as when she fought Rhea Ripley two years ago and then also Bianca Bella versus Jay Cargill uh, yeah, some, yeah I happy. think that one's I'm not going to say that one's going to be like another women's like the headline match I don't know, this is the thing going into both of them this year, I really couldn't predict, and I know if, I know I said this a minute ago that technically it's February this year, uh, the Royal Rumble but honestly, if you were to ask me right now who I thought was going to win, the men's and the women's I would not have a clue and the reason why I say that is because I was talking about this with Peter earlier. And he said to me, well, when the only person that's been announced for Mania so far is John Cena. And he said, do you think that he go in with a title? And I thought, I don't think he could, he will, but I think there is a chance that he could win the Rumble. I really think there is because it's his last Mania. And I don't know why. But because Cody's got enough build and because Roman's got enough build, I don't think the person that wins the Royal Rumble for the men's this year has to actually headline the thing. And for that reason, I think that 
giving it to John Cena, it would give so much more to his match, and then you put him with whoever it's going to be. Gunther. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people that you look at at that roster and you just think, who is he going to give that final massive push to? Which technically isn't going to be until this time next year. Let's be fair, because he's going to be there at SummerSlam next year. And I think that's where he's going to really retire. I don't see him retiring at Mania, as much as people have said it. It's been confirmed that it's not going to be at Mania um, enough times now. But it's, who do you give that final? I actually can see him retiring on, on just a humble night of Raw. Like where it all began. Sort of yeah. Thing. Yeah, 100%. Actually, this has almost given me chills thinking about it. I think his last words in the WWE ring might be something like, and all I've given you is ruthless aggression, and then drops the mic. You know, like, because that's the first words he ever said. I think his last words will be. No, 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 but Charlie, that's the first words he ever said in WWE was ruthless aggression. That could be his last words. You know what I mean? You know, and I, I hope no, I, I think his last words will be something like, your time, your time is now, because my time is up. I think he'll flip it. I think whoever he loses to in his last fight will be in the ring during whatever his last appearance is. And his last words will be, he will flip the theme tune. He will go, your time is up, and my time is... My time is up, and your time is now. Or your your time is now. My time is up. That's genuinely how I think he's going to end it. No, I like that. I like that, what you said as well. I like what you said as well. Yeah. Was... I just think it would be a perfect way to end it. Yeah, I you agree. I mean? It's a nice sentiment, yeah. 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 Um, I think, yeah, it'll be really cool. It's, it's always interesting to think what's going to happen. And that's why I'm so excited because, like, it's that time where, like, you know, we've had a little bit of the off season and we're going to kind of flatline a little bit going over Christmas because we always do. But where you've got things like, oh, pre sale went on sale today, you know, all the big sale goes on sale on Friday. You know, it's only two pay per views left in the year and then we're back on the road to Mania. I mean, like, you know, let's get excited for this. It's, you know, it's coming around the corner. It's also crazy to think that. You know, we've watched so many manias from home and then thinking we're actually going to be there. I know that's the thing that keeps on making me like, even when like I keep on seeing like the little clips on TikTok or like on, you know, like YouTube ads or whatever it is. And it's like um, Triple H walking down uh, the strip and he goes, and this year we're bringing the show of our shows to Las Vegas. I'm like, I'm going to be there. Yeah, it's literally, I, I keep thinking that and like, oh my God. Like, that is super exciting. Like, super exciting. I'm going to uh, that. Uh, you know, and I think... I'm I'm very glad of the view we've got, like, from being on the floor at All In and stuff. I know they have screens, and there will be more screens at that, but I think you're better off... If you're not right near the front, you're better you, off being... I think great. part of something like that, and I hope you agree, is that... I think part of being at events like that, being at a spectacle as much as that, it's as fun as watching the audience as it is watching the main thing. And I think if you can get both within your view, it makes it more, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um... Because I know a lot of times when I've gone to Wembley Stadium for concerts, because that's like the, one of the biggest places you can go, I, I, a lot of the time I actually spend watching the audience because I'm just like, this is insane like to be witnessing this in front of this many people well actually i know this is a bit off topic and i don't know if i told you but i got coldplay tickets did you actually yeah no way yeah i got coldplay tickets i'm not sure if i'm going on the same day as you but what date did you get i need to double check but yeah was it a saturday it might be if it's a saturday there's only two saturdays they're doing so we could be going to such a mm. yeah i'll have to double check but yeah i'm going to coldplay yeah. Oh, be really cool. Where are you based? Good seats as well. Good seats you're, because you're up, mom, like in the seats. Me, my mum actually got me them for Christmas, but she let it slip early. So nice. Yeah, yeah. No, because I know I'm because it's my mum's present. I know we're standing this time, but um, 
Yeah, oh, mate, honestly, you're in for such a treat. We're going completely off subject here, guys, but nah. Honestly, what I said before, I don't like, I didn't want to admit it when I first saw them, but honestly, Coldplay, they are probably one of the best live bands you will ever see in your life. They're just unbelievable. Oh, and they've got a new so album. They've well. they got a I new album. The new album. New album's so good. Listen to it, yeah. You need to listen to it. There's some really good songs on there. And not only that, we're probably going to be treated to a weekend performance at, at Las Vegas too. You never uh, know. You never, never know. that's been in the pipeline, mate. No, nah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. Do you see, one more thing to just go over just before we end uh, this week's podcast. Um, one thing I did think about when we were going over this, um, there's been some major, major moments at Mania before, um, and some of them are like, you've got big hosts presenting it. I don't think they're not going to not take the chance of doing that this year. I think they're going to get someone big as well to do it. Um, Vegas. Yeah, of course. Um, but the one thing I was thinking about, and it's something that we've seen I'd say, even if it was just a quick cameo, happened at nearly every Mania for the last 10 years now. Do you see any really big names returning at Mania? Because I would love it. Uh, big name I moment. think is Brock. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. But to be honest, with the schedule they've got coming up, I wouldn't be surprised if they wanted to bring him back sooner. You know, like first day of Raw on Netflix or Raw Rumble. Yeah, there's that. So um, if he's not back by then, 100%. But I can see him coming back before that. Heck, I wouldn't be surprised if he came back before the end of this year. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Um, who else? What do we think? What do we think? Who do think? I don't know who could be a massive return. I, I'd love to see Ronda Rousey back, but I don't know if she'll ever come back. I don't think uh, she will. I was I was literally thinking the exact same thing. I was like, that would get a really good pop. I thought, nah, it's not going to happen, so I'm not going to say it. Um, I mean, I think... Yeah, but that's one of the equally, ones... That... I, I, equally, I think that uh, Charlotte and Becky will get a huge pop when <laughs> and where they make their appearance. One of them's got to be at um, Royal Rumble, surely. I'm often not that annoyed at fans, but I was always annoyed with the way they treated Ronda Rousey. I, I think they, you know, they never really appreciated her because for me, she could have been the female Brock Lesnar. And I think she Paul could have. You know what? I was thinking the exact same thing the other day. I was thinking it the completely other way around to you. I was thinking she expected to be the female Brock Lesnar. But no, they booked That's what her I see from it. Her matches too long. They, they, you know, she should have come in and come out. Like it should have been like Goldberg. You know, get in, win, and go. That should. Yeah. That's how. Yeah, that should have worked. Um, and also, but at the same I, time, I think she had she way too big, too way too big boots for her self to fill. I don't know. Yeah, but in that regard, I feel like she should have been the first client of Paul Heyman, first female client of Paul Heyman. I think that would have worked perfectly. I think that, that could have worked perfectly bad. as well. Yeah, she, was bad on, yeah, she was bad on the mic. She wasn't great on the mic. And Paul Heyman representing her, that would have been a brilliant idea, I think. Um, I mean, the only yeah. other person I could ever see Paul Heyman representing as a woman, and she, he never will because she's not with us anymore, and I think if they ever did it, it would have been fantastic, was China. Because it would have yeah. worked so well. Yeah. You know, you, you um, never would have. Maybe Jay Jay Cargill, she's quite a presence. No, no, she's got the presence. I just don't see it working because you need someone. Like, hmm. Ask me that question in a year. There you go. Ask me that question in a year, because I don't think her, f with what's happened so far, I do not think she's had an easy first year run with what she's been given. What we were told to expect in January when all that started kicking off that she was signing and it weren't confirmed and, you know, she was seen in the audience and all that crap. I think what we were told to expect then to where we are now is far and few between everyone's expectations because they just haven't, and I'm not blaming her anymore. 
they haven't delivered on what they said they were going to set for her. They put her with Bianca and they went, okay, that'll work. Okay, so this is mania, yeah? All right, so this will work there. Right, we're in October. They haven't done anything else. I mean, has she even had a singles match? Genuinely. For a title. She, has she had a singles match for a title? Or am I, I being think, really stupid here? I think she should do, but she hasn't. Yeah, and this is the thing. Like the second the wheel started to roll off back in around about June and it started losing momentum, they should have immediately broken that tag, tag team apart. Not just for Jade Cargill, but for also for Bianca Belair because they both individually could do amazing things working in just the women's division. I agree. You know, I agree. That's where it is. But on that note, I think it's a good time to call it an end. Callum, thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Uh, I want to really quickly just say thank you for everyone that's tuned in this week and for holding on with us. We know we've taken a little break. Uh, our life has just got a little bit insane recently. And, you know, sometimes yeah. you just can't predict what's going to be going on. But hopefully we'll be back with you next week. And, yeah, thanks so much for listening. Thank and you. this has been Before the Free Count. Thank you. All right.